friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. Tonight we're going to talk about the Flat Earth Conspiracy and are people getting dumber? My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Tuesday. How are you, my friend? Doing, uh, doing a show on Tuesday is a little unusual for us, right? We do Monday, Wednesday, Friday usually, but uh, we're doing Tuesday, Thursday this week, right? Well, we've hit that point of the summer where we're on our abbreviated summer schedule. You know, there have been times when we used to take like a month off. We don't do that anymore. But this week and next, we're just going to do two shows. We'll, we'll have a Tuesday-Thursday show this week and a Tuesday-Thursday show next week. We'll, but the following week, we'll be back on, back on three shows. And I realize I promised that we'd have three brand new shows at the end of Friday's show. So there you go. The future, it's just really unpredictable, isn't it? It's hard to... <laughs> It's uh, hard to predict, especially the future, right? So, uh, exactly, especially the future yeah. part of the future. So I, I feel that my point has been made once again about uncertainty and the uh, and the future. But we do have we do have two fun shows this week and next. And speaking of fun, let's talk about flat Earth. And first off, Stephen, we've been having some fun talking about wacky ideas over the last few months, right? We did the Yanni Laurel show, and we've been talking about the Mandela effect. But here's the one that's kind of the up-and-comer as far as out-there ideas that are, that are gaining traction. Flat Earth. Are yeah. people starting to adopt this idea? Are they beginning to embrace this idea in a way they haven't before? And what does that tell you about how, how smart people are? My, my, my first thought when I look at this purportedly growing number of people who buy into the idea of the flat earth is, is this just another conspiracy theory? And if so, how does it relate to some of the other big web conspiracies, right? I mean, I, I listed a few here. I thought, well, people on the internet, they're all into 9-11 conspiracy theories. They're the people who are sure that was an inside job. And th that's probably the, what would you say, kind of the most serious of all the yeah. conspiracy theories. People take that one very seriously. And there's not that I think it's right or that I buy into it, but in some ways it's got the most intellectual heft, right, <laughs> of all the big uh, conspiracy theories because people really spend a lot of time on it and they're all over the place researching their facts and they're, they're taking a, I almost hate to use this word, kind of scholarly approach to, to backing up their idea that 9-11 that was an inside job. Then you got things like, you know, the weirdest of them, this idea that aliens that are actually lizards are controlling the earth and that's not just a single theory, but that's, I don't know, that's almost kind of a, it's a whole category of theories, right? That people buy into about Roswell and nuclear testing and uh, time travel and, and all, you know, the, just the full Art Bell panoply of, of conspiracies. But it all comes down to, in the end, it used to be it all comes down to that the world was going to end in 2012. That didn't work out. But we've still got the right. lizardoid aliens controlling the planet, right? I mean, that 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 remains kind of a kind of a common theme um, b behind that one. And then a, a recent addition, the up and comer, is the Man Mandela effect, right? The 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 theory that the past is changing, that we're finding all these anomalies between how the world is and how it used to be, and it's kind of this parallel universe. How, it's, re how it's remembered versus how it is. Those are all powerful conspiracy theories. And I think they've all been enabled, pushed along, you know, born and bred on the World Wide Web. They're, they're, they are definitely Internet conspiracy theories. And I wonder if they all have in common that they're spread, that they're encouraged by people trying to refute them, right? That that has somehow given them life, that all of these conspiracy theories have been kind of enabled by the fact that people are engaged by them on both sides, right? That, that some, somehow the give and take between them helps them along. What do you think? Well, the Internet allows people that have um, you know, a worldview or whatever to uh, connect with one another. And so in, in the old days, you had uh, 500 people that uh, believed in, in the entire United States that believed in uh, a flat earth. Then they'd be 500 people that they'd be the, cr the crazy person in their hometown with nobody else to talk to, right? in 500 different hometowns, right? But uh, now they can connect. There's, you know, some, there's some uh, group or something on the Internet where they, they get together and 
they recently had their first international meeting of Flat Earth, the Flat Earth Society, or someplace like in Kentucky or someplace. I wonder if that came from around the entire globe. Bill. Well, that, that's the thing. They called it international. They did not call it a global conference. On <laughs> that's true. And some people but, have to uh, come really far to get to get places on, on a flat Earth because I don't know if you've seen. There's some great YouTube videos about that. It's like, wow, look how far the Japanese had to come to attack Pearl Harbor. Right? It's a, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. um, that that could do that. That, that, that they had planes that. with that capability back. Uh, back yeah. back in those days, I I was actually watching a baseball game on TV the other night. This is how this is how these ideas seep into your consciousness. And it, the Rockies were playing in San Francisco, and the sun had set. And I was watching, and it's like the sun was out in San Francisco. And I'm like, ah, there you go. See, I'm in Colorado. They're in California. It's a live game, right? Yeah. And if we lived in a flat Earth, either the sun would already be down there, or the sun would still be up here, right? Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. These people need to watch baseball and and figure it out. You know, uh, that's <laughs> well, the thing. and I've noticed that for years. I've noticed that for years. It's like, oh, hey, look, it's already it's, it's still light out there. You know, or you watch one on right. the East Coast. Look, it's already dark there. It's still light here. I've thought about that for years, but I never thought about it as proof of flat Earth because I never thought of that as the thing that needed proving. Right? I was just always like, yeah. oh yeah, it's, the time is different in these other places. Isn't that interesting? But what that the time is different means is. We live on a spherical planet, right? That's what it, that's, that's what it comes down to. And, and the conspiracy to persuade everyone that it's not flat would go all the way to people who do sports, right? They would all yeah. pre-record yeah. them when the sun's out and then show them as though they were live. And presumably then all the people in the stands are in on it and everything, right? Because they've got friends back in other states, you know, and... Any live event, of course, not just a sporting event, any live event that happens when it's light one place and dark someplace else seems to me prove, disproves flat earth if you're actually looking for proof. You know, if you, <laughs> well, you know, I'm having a hard time even wrapping my head around what their cosmology would be. I mean, uh, how do you, how do you uh, go from day to night on a flat earth? I, I don't get that. But, okay, so we're on a disc that's like being flipped through space like a, like a coin being flipped or something? I, I, no, it stays the same. I guess the sun's moving around us, maybe? Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I I, 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 I'm not sure. But that, <laughs> but that goes to what I see as the big difference between flat earth and these other conspiracies. And I'll, I'll give these other conspiracies credit for me because I think you I think you make a really good point when you say that there were always people who believed in that. And the flat Earth Society has been around forever. It, it's yeah. not a new inter, it's not a new internet thing. I'm, my uncle was telling me about the flat Earth Society when I was a kid, and I was just like, "You've got to be kidding!" And it was a thing. That, and he was not a believer, by the way. He was just amused by it as he was as he was telling yeah. me this thing. But but it, but it was around as a as an amusement. And I always wondered if the people in it weren't tongue in cheek, right? And I, to this day. With the current flap about it, I wonder if some of them aren't just kind of just trolling. having a good time. Like uh, of the 500 or so people, let's say uh, that were, were were reputed to have showed up for that conference, how many were true believers, and how many yeah. were just getting a kick out of it? Yeah, they're, um, just, they're they're having some fun with it because you have to. The the difference between flat Earth and these other conspiracies is, I think there's a leap you have to take into stupid, right? It's like <laughs> into not accepting what's commonly known about the world. And, refu and, and, and I use the word stupid as opposed to, say, ignorant, or, and even that word has a kind of a moral connotation, because it's like you have to willingly not know things to believe in the yeah. flat earth, right? You, you, Intentionally <laughs> obtuse. You have yeah. to really, you have to go away uh, to uh, yeah, work I mean, at you it. Gotta go you to have to trouble. work at it to be this dumb. I wonder, the story that we're, uh, we're referencing here, uh, Phil, about there might be more Americans starting to believe this. I, I don't know that it, what they're pointing to really shows that, though. That's, um, that, that's a good point. The, the headline here is more and more Americans are starting to believe Earth is flat. But if you read it, their evidence for that is that some famous people – arguably, moderately, celebrity types now say that they believe in the flat earth, that, which doesn't mean that more people, and that the number of searches has gone up, right? So, yeah. you, you know, Well, I mean, you had the guy doing that thing with the rocket, and that stunt was kind of interesting, right? And he was right. a flat earther, and he was trying to prove, I'm going to go this height to see that the earth is still flat. Of course, he didn't go high enough. 
to see the curvature of the earth. But things like that get people's attention, so they do internet searches for it. And a couple of dumb, dumb celebrities don't, don't amount to anything either. I, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me a little bit of the 1980s satanic panic, okay? Ah, okay. And, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because a lot of people had a lot of interest in Satanism during the 80s. Okay, because right. it was everywhere and everybody was scared of it and everything else. Let's imagine that had there been Google in the 1980s. I mean, that's what everybody would have been Googling, right? Want, trying to find out stuff. Does that mean there would have been more Satanists? Right. No. Right. No, I don't think so. No, it just uh, the, the fact that it's of interest to the population doesn't necessarily mean that it's gaining credibility with that population at all. I think that's a great point. The fact that there's all this attention being paid to flat earth doesn't necessarily mean that there are more flat earthers than there used to be. There probably used to be more than we realized, right? People just who never thought about it, but assumed the, <laughs> the world was flat because they didn't have any kind of scientific knowledge. And now they've, now they're empowered, right? They're on the internet. They, they've got a way of, yeah. th that's the thing back when it was a few people in every town, right? How are yeah. those people going to communicate with each other? Well, now everybody gets to communicate with each other and therein lies the problem. Okay. Because, We've got this potential situation where the population may be becoming less smart than it was, right? Let's just assume for a minute that more people do believe the Earth is flat than used to, okay? Let's, let's, let's say that's true. Does that indicate that we're dumber than, than we used to be, right? And if so, should we just stop talking about this altogether? Is the attention that people are paying to the idea of flat Earth helping to spread the idea. Are we, Stephen, actually helping to make the population of the United States and the world, I guess, dumber by having this show? By talking about this. Because we're spreading the idea of flat earth, and, and that's, that's not helping people get any smarter. What do, what do you think? It's like the ultimate cut in uh, that Billy Madison movie. You know, everyone in this auditorium is dumber for having heard what you said. <laughs> um, right, yes. <laughs> No, I don't. I really don't think so. I mean, to the extent that it, you count any in, any interest in uh, flat Earth as uh, a sign that there's more people that believe it, uh, I guess a show entitled Flat Earth would, you know, go that way. But I don't think that uh, anyone can come away from our show thinking that we've uh, produced more evidence for uh, the flat Earth quote theory, right? So I, 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 obviously not, right? But I just right. wonder if all the people refuting it are giving it some juice right and that helps spread the idea right that even well we, that, there, this, there's the old idea that even negative attention is 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 a positive thing right i'm not yeah. so i maybe there's maybe there's something to that so maybe we've we've done a bad thing here doing this show because we're helping spread the idea of flat earth that's one problem and we're helping make the population dumber right that's the that's the other one that's that's really kind of oh no well that's a that's a thing we would we would never want to do and and you know when we talk about what was the movie called the, where the population's getting Idi dumber? Idiocracy. Yeah, you talk about the idiocracy effect. That's viewed as demographic. The dumb people have kids. Then, the, then that generation, the dumb people have kids. Then that generation, the dumb people have kids. And the, and the population gets dumber and dumber. But here's a way by which people can get dumber without any reference to demographics, right? It's just dumb ideas get, get spread and, you know, they're attractive to some people and people, and people adopt them. So is it possible... Stephen, that people are getting dumber in part because of the Internet spreading dumb ideas and listening to shows like this one. What do you think? I'm going to just exempt us right now, Phil. Uh, I think this show doesn't, doesn't make people dumber. But, <laughs> Absolutely not. But, uh, it, but, it makes uh, you more charming is what it does. Yeah, so exactly. That's what it does. It makes people like you <laughs> to listen to this show. That's what it does. <laughs> but meme theory basically says that all, all memes, that's ideas, snipp snippets of, of ideas or whatever, they get traded around sometimes without being challenged very much. And, uh, and to the extent that we can eat more easily exchange ideas and divide ourselves in a little communities where we don't accept uh, criticism from, from the outside, we can wall ourselves up in this little community of people that believe these crazy things and not have anybody challenge it. And uh, you can live your whole life that way if you choose to. I think that we tend to be as smart as our network is wide. Mm. If we're accepting ideas from all over the world or at least hearing out ideas that may challenge some of the things that we, our core beliefs or even some of our beliefs, 
on the margins, then we tend to at least examine our own beliefs and, and we might come away believing in, in our, our beliefs more strongly or, you know, say, you know what, I, I examined that, that's, that's bunk and I'm putting it aside. But over here, this, you know what, this little, this little area, I, I probably need to adjust what I'm, um, my outlook a little bit here. And we tend to be that smart as, uh, as, as uh, wide as our network is. Well, you know, as the techno optimists that we are, one of the one of the great trends leading into the future that I have been a proponent of and have taken great comfort in is the so-called Flynn effect, the right. notion that we're just getting smarter and smarter and smarter. And IQ tests have borne this out, starting in with the beginning of IQ tests, whenever that was, late 19th century, early 20th century, from right. from the time that the tests have been given, it, it, it has appeared that populations have been growing more intelligent. So there you go. We're getting smarter. Thank you very much. And idiocracy is a funny comedy, but it doesn't map to evidence that we have in the in the real world. But now some people are saying not so fast. Right. In the last year or so, there have been a kind of a spate of stories that have come out about how the Flynn effect may be slowing or even in some places reversing. And there's some evidence like uh, in Germany, for example, they see a mark marked slowing and maybe even reversing in some subject matter of intelligence. And that's, that's a little bit spooky. Again, I would, I would think that it comes down to uh, your, your network. If you're plugged into the world, don't have blinders on to your particular uh, community or, you know, and I'm just going to think about these things and nothing else, then uh, you tend, you, you, you tend to be challenged and that, that tends to buff up your IQ, I think. But uh, mm. You know, but uh, to the extent that people wall themselves off, as we've been discussing in the shows we've been doing about social media, technologies we have today make it possible to build exactly that kind of network, right? The network that right. walls you off, that 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 doesn't increase your worldview, that doesn't make you smarter. So, wow. So it's not our show. These social media technologies, those aren't smartphones. It doesn't have to be that way, though. You know, if yeah. you choose to, you can uh, build a network of people that have varying beliefs. And you can challenge yourself. You don't have to wall yourself off. But people tend to, though. It's interesting to think that part of the population may be making itself more intelligent using the same technologies, or actually the same platform, not necessarily the same right. technologies. I don't know how, how many people are actually making themselves smarter using Instagram, right? Is anyone right. actually getting, getting a lot smarter? But using YouTube, I think people are getting smarter. When you, think of, when you think about social media, when you think about people reinforcing their ideas and the echo chambers and those kinds of things, there is a definite possibility that there's an anti-intelligence component to that. There's something that works yeah. against people making themselves smarter. So once again, we may, have, we may have landed on another critique of social media as it's done today, and Stephen, it sounds like you're starting to outline a new way we need to organize ourselves on the internet. So that's right. I, that's I right. expect to see a manifesto here in the next few weeks. For <laughs> well, it's already been written. Uh, Matthew Ridley's book, The Rational Optimist, pretty much uh, is my manifesto on that. Okay, so, so that that idea about networks making you smarter comes from there. That, exactly. He he points to Tasmania, for example, it, it, when it when it was cut off from mainland the mainland of uh, Australia. The uh, tribes in Australia continue to in, in, increase in, in their technology and everything. And the Tasmanians actually regressed uh, because their network was too small. Whenever a population gets cut off and on an island or whatever, their toolkit will diminish, whereas on the mainland, people are getting more and more uh, technologically savvy. And we see that worldwide every, uh, every single time. And, uh, How about that? So here we've yeah, got a platform that allows us to connect or allows us to cut ourselves off in Either effective way. ways. Yep. And if people are getting dumber, they're choosing <laughs> in some ways. They're choosing, choosing to live on an island of their own, own limited ideas, and that's too bad. Well, that's why this show is never going to make anyone dumber, because if this show is anything, <laughs> it is a transport vessel off that island, right? That's what we're, <clears throat> that's what we're here exactly. to do, folks. Exactly. We're here to take Killigan, you. load up. Uh, we're, we're leaving. That's right. We're here to take you to places <laughs> you have never been before. And speaking of which, on the Thursday show coming up later this week, we're going to be taking you all to the end of data modeling. It's going to be a fast-forward show, and we're going to be welcoming – Pascal Desmarais, he's the founder and CEO of Hackolade. So that should be a fun one. Look forward to talking with you then. Stephen, thank you all for being with us. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.